Welcome back. We're here now with Diego Martinez, uh, running for governor here in 2021. He's from San Andreas, California. Welcome, Diego. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your campaign? Well, my name is Diego Martinez. I am an immigrant. I came to the United States when I was six years old. Uh, 2008, I became a U.S. citizen. I got to be thankful for being in the United States because the United States gives you an opportunity that no other country does. You can come here, you can have nothing, and then you can turn around and have the whole world at your hands as long as you want to work. I've been in different industries from being a bus boy all the way to running multi-million dollar car dealership as a general manager, bringing people's companies back when they were failing and we brought them back to being successful. I was in the car business for over 17 years. About six years ago, I got tired of corporate America and I started a bail bonds company. I actually worked with my brother for about a year and then I had to go back in the car business for a couple of years to save up some money so I could open up my own business. And we've been here uh, in the small counties, we're in Calaveras County. And we've been successful for the last uh, six years. When somebody told us it'd take me six months and we'd be out of business. The campaign trail has been a little tough. We started in March of 2020, uh, pretty much self-funding the campaign. And the reason I'm running for office was simple. California has a problem. We've been sitting idly by voting for people who we think because of their name recognition or because they've been a politician that they needed to be able to lead us, that they knew was best for us. We watched uh, Government Brown shut down some uh, good jobs, uh, even though we had a surplus, you gotta give the man credit where it's at. He actually had a surplus to the state of California. Gavin Newsom takes office, all of a sudden my industry starts suffering because of Prop 25. Government Brown started with, uh, it was uh, Prop uh, 10 when he was gonna take us out of business. We got enough signatures to put it on the ballot. And when you start looking at everything that's going on, you're like, these guys don't know what they're talking about. They're gonna disemploy 10,000 people and cost the California taxpayers a billion dollars a year for what's costing California zero right now. That doesn't make no sense whatsoever. Their biggest excuse was, it's not fair to low income uh, communities. Then fix the bail schedule. Don't take the whole bail system out of it. Don't charge the, uh, the victim twice by making them have to pay for being victimized now having to watch somebody. So I went online and I looked at what it took. And I said, with my business background, with what I have done, if you look at California as a business, California is a business with different departments, just like a car industry. You have different departments, so you gotta manage them. You surround yourself with quality people who are experts in those fields, and you, uh, you go and you manage them. You don't have to manage the whole system. You gotta manage the people who you, Put in charge to manage each special division because they're specialties. We have water problems. We have homeless problems. Our homeless problem is rising. We have crime problems that are going through the roof because of bad legislation. We have water problems because our government dumps it into the ocean. We have forest fire problems that are costing a lot of people a lot of money right now because of the premiums going up. Why? Because of mismanagement from our government. Our government has failed us. Both parties have failed the California people in one sense or the other. Mismanagement of our forests is causing the fires are up north right now. People are losing their homes. Why? Because we took the lumber industry out of California because we overregulated this state. People are leaving, jobs are leaving, industry is leaving. People are becoming homeless because the prices are going through the roof. Not only that, our governor says we're gonna take care of homeless people from other uh, states. Why and where did that become a California problem and an issue? We have a border problem that nobody wants to address. We have kids coming in here. We have human trafficking going on. We have drug problems here in the state of California, but the taxpayers are paying for people to have drugs. We're paying for their, uh, for their shooter clinics. We're paying for their needles. And it's okay. We're buying hotels for the homeless and that's not fixing anything, it's a band-aid. We're taking them off the street and we're putting them in a hotel and nobody knows whatever happens after that. Are those people even in those hotels? So with all those problems, it's funny because I don't care where you go up and down California. Every single politician will tell you every single problem with the state of California, but they forget one problem. 
Where's the solution? Where's the solution to all this stuff? So let's start with as many questions as you have and let me know what your first question is. Okay, thanks very much. So um, first question um, I'd like to ask, one of the big issues we have here, and you sort of touched on this, is that we, we're having a great migration, it seems like, of businesses out of the state. And it's, it's, it's middle-class people and businesses or a tax base is eroding. I wonder, do you have a plan for how we might reverse that or stop that, or, or should we even be concerned about that? Well, the first thing you should always be concerned when California people don't have jobs, because that stops our revenue in our state. That also stops people's home life and their style of living. You can't support small businesses or big businesses without income coming in. Well, how do you do that? You gotta have jobs. California has one of the biggest problems, the most regulated and overtaxed for corporations to wanna do business here. It's harder to do and open a business in the state of California than to get an eight ball down the street. So where we should have regulations, we don't. What we don't, we do. So the first thing we need to do is deregulate California, work with the environmentalists, to actually deregulate California, make it right for everybody, lower our corporate taxes, and invite businesses into the state of California. Now we also uh, run into a second problem. Your other problem is, even though we need businesses, we need corporations more than what we have right now because we really don't, we also need the small businesses to continue doing what they're doing. And the small businesses right now are getting taxed to death, almost wanting to leave California. So how do you fix all this? Because this is all our economy that we're talking about right now. First thing you need to do is close our borders. Stop letting people come in, okay? We gotta do that right away. And this has something to do with the economy as much as people would like to tell me it doesn't. First of all, we can't keep feeding people and we can't keep taking care of, pe uh, taking care of people that have never paid a penny into the system and that are not viable members of society. But you gotta close the borders because people keep coming in for the free handouts. The next thing you need to do is bring trade schools back to the state of California. I'm gonna do my job. I'm gonna have California deregulated and I'm gonna bring corporations back here, okay? That's great. But if you don't have the man skills and the uh, power and people that can do the work, how are these corporations gonna operate? Well, this is the first step with them. We're gonna cut a deal with everybody who has a business in the state of California, big or small. If you own a construction company and you hire somebody on the job training, we're gonna give you a tax cut at the end of the year because you took somebody who didn't have the skill and now you're giving them a skill to be able to do the job. We're gonna have people go to trade schools. The trade schools are gonna be ran by our junior colleges and different organizations. A lot of unions have trade schools. They can actually employ more people so there's more work for them to be able to do. You have more corporations coming in, more businesses, more revenue able to do this. We're gonna have uh, unions, um, your local uh, city colleges, Junior colleges have these schools for everybody to be able to go. At this point, that's going to be a government funded program because we need everybody to go back to work and be able to generate revenue. You take care of that and you just take care of two of the biggest issues. One, we have employment. Two, we have the skill set labors to be able to do this employment. The third thing you do is you bring um, apprenticeship programs back with these big corporations, people that just graduated from college. They need to be able to have a job. Well, how do they do that? We get them on apprenticeship and we give those companies a tax break to be able to employ. Now, when you create more revenue, you can cut taxes across the board of California, or you can take the extra revenue and actually go back into infrastructure, which California really needs, because that goes right into your water problem, your road problems, your tax problem. So that's our solution for our economy in a handful and a quick 30 second explanation. Okay. Um, you know, one of the big issues here this, this week, a, a lot of students went back to school in California um, with a mask mandate. Um, and there's been talk about vaccine mandates. And uh, with, with this Delta variant, there's just a lot more rules coming down. And some people are worried about another lockdown. Did we handle that correctly last year, this time? And what is your position on, on what California should be doing, what the governor should be doing uh, about COVID for the future? Well, I don't believe we ever handled COVID right. I think at the beginning, uh, nobody had enough information to actually say, lock us down or not. We all went for the two week curve, never happened. We haven't left lockdown. Uh, in the middle of December, they try to undo us for a couple of weeks. They made businesses, small businesses spend a lot of money to be regulated. 
into COVID-19 and then they shut them back down. Yet our governor is do as I say, not as I do. So let's, we can look back and we can analyze everything that happened and say, okay, this, this, and this, and you're wrong. Can't fix that right now. The only thing is we can look forward and move forward. First of all, mask mandates should never be a mandate. A mandate is exactly what it is. It's a mandate, it's not a law. But that created hatred amongst people. That created people that dislike each other and go and fight with each other. We are in America. We are in California, the land of the free. You should have a choice whether you want to wear a mask or whether you don't. That is your private choice. If you're not wearing a mask, keep away from the people who are wearing a mask. It's simple. I had a lady one day come up to me. She was like, I wear a mask to protect you. You should wear a mask to protect me. And I looked at her and I said, if you're protecting me, you're protecting yourself, right? She said, yes. I said, well, if you go to that set of aisle, I stay over here. You don't need to worry about me and protecting me. I got this. The lady kind of looked at me funny and I said, I appreciate your concern. It's my right not to wear a mask. I wasn't rude. I was just straightforward with it. And I think it, uh, it all started from the government mandating and forcing people, oh, you need to tell on your neighbor. You need to do this. First of all, we need to stop that. People have a choice that they should have the right and the freedom to do it. Just like the freedom of medical, uh, medical freedom, you should have the same uh, freedom whether you want to wear a mask or whether you don't. The same thing with the vaccination. I think it's getting out of control where they're making you have a passport or an ID to go into a place. Why does that make sense? So now you need permission. That's basically what your vaccination card is, a permission. You know what? We need to go back to Atlanta, the free and letting people choose. Government has overreached in our personal lives, and it's sad that this has happened. My first day into office, the first thing I'm going to do is remove all the mandates. Am I going to encourage people to get the vaccination? If you want to get the vaccination, it's available. But at the same time, if you feel you don't need it or your doctor tells you you don't need it, you shouldn't have it. You want to handle COVID-19 from here forward, we're going to handle it completely different. First of all, we have 58 counties with 58 different uh, solutions for COVID. But the real reality of this is not the lady or the doctor or the health expert in Washington or in Sacramento who are actually working the hospitals. It's the hospital doctors, the hospital staff, and that's what we need to be talking to about how to take care of this problem. The people who are on the front line and actually dealing with it every day. Not some guy that's doing a study out of a computer or a book that doesn't understand what's going on. I understand cases go up, but why are they going up? When the test first came up, it was for emergency only, and the test couldn't divide up or separate if it was COVID or a common flu. It was used for emergency only. Well, we're out of that stage. Why don't we have a real test yet that can actually tell you what's wrong with us? That's a problem. That's your first problem, and that's your first solution. The vaccine was in an emergency was an emergency vaccine, which overrules the 1905 Supreme Court ruling saying that a state can and shall mandate for you to take a vaccination unless it's under an emergency status. This vaccine has not been tested and has not been proven. It has not been out of emergency situation. For those reasons, you have religious and medical reasons not to have the vaccination. I'm going to fight with the Supreme Court on the 1905 ruling on vaccinations because I don't think we should ever mandate or force anybody to do anything. So there's your answer on COVID. Hopefully that kind of cleared it all for you. All right. Well, thank you very much. Last question is, how does someone get a hold of you if they want to find out more about you or support your campaign? I mean, we're not going to talk about the homeless today? Well, we could if you'd like to. We've got a couple minutes. Do you want to address that? Let me touch the homeless and the water problem because those are huge problems in the state of California and the California people deserve to know that. First okay. of all, you have a water problem that's man-made. We're dumping more water in the ocean than we're keeping in our reservoirs. Uh, Government Brown shut down our desalination plants. We have three of them in the state of California. My first day into office, I'm actually gonna work with the private sector to get those desalination plants going back into stand, into system and dumping the water back in that we need so we take care of this water shortage. That's a simple explanation about the water right now. Our homeless situation is out of control. Day one, those people will be off the street and they will actually be relocated in housing. Temporary housing where we can evaluate 70% of our homeless people have mental health problems and the other 30%. So we're gonna take 70%, we're gonna open up mental health 
get those people the help that they need. The other 30%, we're going to take the old government buildings that we own or the old city buildings, the old warehouses, and we are actually going to remember trade schools. We talk about trade schools. We're going to bring these people into a trade school, teaching them how to build their own housing. So they're going to help us build their housing with rehab centers for alcohol and drugs and have a counselor. Sorry, I try to do that in uh, about enough time so we don't run out of time there. But those are kind of like the little nits and grits. We're going to fix our education, not, not about school choice, but it's about fixing education, making sure education, the whole state and every school is a choice. And that's going after the teachers union and the legislation who are writing uh, what we teach in our classes. So uh, how do you get a hold of me? Diego Martinez for governor.com is my website. Diego Martinez for Governor 2020, unofficial on Facebook because they wouldn't let me change their name and now I can't call it like a joke. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Diego Martinez for Governor and we are also at Diego for Cali 22 on Twitter. We're on all social media platforms and I welcome everybody to join us every Thursday morning. I have a program called Waking Up California at 9 a.m. and we interact with people live. People ask questions, they come in on my lives. I invite everybody because I feel both parties have failed the California people. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks for being here and good luck to you. Well, thank you and thank you for your program. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.